guys. We are so glad that you are with us again for our Second Generations Lockdown Faith series of lessons. Hey, I want you guys to look around. You see some new faces. First of all, in the screen directly below me, you see Mr. Jeremy from Second Generation, and he's also got Mr. Colton and Miss Autumn there along with him too. And then if you'll look kind of over here, no, over here in this screen, you're gonna see Mr. Josh and he's got Brindley with him. So the kiddos are gonna help us today in our lesson along with Mr. Jeremy. So we've invited some friends. And then also too, if you've noticed, I changed my location for recording tonight. And I want you guys to look right back there. And look who's over there. It's Mr. Ichabob. And I couldn't come home without bringing Ichabob and one of his best friends. Look who else I've got here. I've got Mr. Eddie. Hey there, Eddie. How are you? Hi, Miss Denise. Good to see you. You know, some things don't change. He's still just really loud. Um, and then also, too, if you kind of look over behind me, those are the angel bears, and they've been hanging here in my home office um, while I've been at home. And these are the last four angel bears that we have in second generation. We have given all of our other angel bears out during this time of lockdown. So I just brought them home to help me remember um, you guys and that you guys are around and with me. Okay, so we are gonna have fun this week and we are gonna start off tonight by playing a brand new game. It is a game called Orbeez, and it's a search game, a memory game. So, Mr. Josh, will you help us by starting out our Orbeez game? Hey, kids! Let's play the ultimate Orbeez memory challenge. There are five objects hidden in the Orbeez. Watch close. When we store them up, they will come to the top. You have 20 seconds to see how many you remember. You can write down the five hidden objects from your memory or tell them to someone. We will play this game three times. Are you ready? Let's go! How many did you remember? How many did you remember? Time for round two. Anna, a pen, and a milk jug, and Skittles. And this thing called hand sanitizer looking jars. I don't know what that is exactly. How many did you remember that time?
Did you remember all five things? Did you remember all five things? Well, that's all we have for today. Aww. See you next time. Bye. Wow, <laughs> that was a fun game and it got more challenging as it went on. Well, this is our snack and yak time. I really hope you've been able to try some of our yummy, fun snack ideas. Well, this week <clears throat> we want you to choose a favorite sugar cookie recipe, okay? Choose whatever you want. It could be a homemade sugar cookie recipe or it could be like the pre-packaged sugar cookie. Those are really good too. Now, we want you to try your best to cut out a crown shape out of your cookie dough and bake them. Now, after they're baked, we want you to decorate them using some things that you can find in your kitchen. So like frosting, maybe some sprinkles, M&Ms, gummy things, or whatever you think would look great to decorate your royal crown. Make it look really royal, really fun, really vibrant. And we want you, after you're done, take some pictures and try to post them to our Second Gen Facebook page. We wanna see how creative you got. So also, we have another fun fact question. Are you ready? I'm ready, okay. So the question is, have you ever been inside a cave? I know there are a lot of caves in Missouri. So in the comments below, type and write if you've been in a cave. And if you can remember, tell us what kind of cave it was or what the name of the cave was. All right, Mr. Randy, do you have a song for us to start? I have a song for us to start. It's one of our favorites. You know, God is loving, he's forgiving. He gave his son, Jesus, to die for our sins. And Jesus is better than the best thing. Sing this with us right now. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, Jesus, you're better than the best thing 
Good singing. Fantastic. Thank you, Randy, for leading us in that. And that is a great song. I hope every one of you at home was singing it. Now, I've got a question for you. Have you had a great week and stayed healthy this week? Well, all of us sure hope that you have. And right now, we're going to open with a word of prayer. And I hope you've been continuing to pray for our families, your families, and then all of our church and government leaders. So right now, let's say a prayer to God. Father, thank you for the love you give to us. Thank you that Jesus is better than the best thing. And thank you that you gave your son for us. Just pray that you'll keep us all safe, keep us all healthy, keep us all worshiping you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So I think, Mr. Josh, is it memory verse time? Indeed it is, Mr. Rick. And so here's what I need you guys to do. I need you to go grab your Bible here. Hopefully you have it nearby, so that way you can go and find the book of First John. Now, Brinley, I have a question for you. Do you remember if First John is in the Old Testament or if it's in the New Testament? Yeah. It's in the New Testament. It's towards the back of your Bible. So you're going to pass the Gospel of John, and almost like you're going back to Revelation, then you're going to find chapter 1 of First John. <clears throat> verse number nine and to make it easy on you let me go ahead and put it up on the screen for you to see all right here it says but if we confess our sins he will forgive our sins we can trust god he does what is right he will make us clean from all the wrongs we have done first john 1 9 I just love this verse because it just reminds me that through Jesus Christ, we have forgiveness and we have the promise of eternal life if he is our Lord and Savior. Now, we're going to kind of shake things up a little bit here because on the next page that I'm going to show you, some of the words from our, from our verse are missing. So I want you to take a good look at this and see if you can figure out what words are missing from the verse. Maybe. There we go. All right. But if we blank our sins, hmm, I wonder what goes in that first blank. If we, what should we do with our sins? We should confess our sins. That's right, Brenda, confess our sins. But if we confess our sins, he will forgive us. He will forgive our sins. We can, I remember it started with a T, we can trust God. We can trust God. He does what is right. He will make us, he makes us, started with a C, C-L, clean. He will make us clean from all the wrongs we have done. 
take some time this week to read through this verse several times with maybe your brother or sister or your family at home and really try to see if you can commit this verse to memory. Okay, are we about ready for another song? Yes, sir. Hold on just one second. You know, we have so many things to be thankful for. Uh, it's endless because God is so good to us. He, he blesses us with things we don't even think about. And I think, I think of new things every day to thank him for because he gives us the shoes on our feet. You know, he, he lets us walk. We can smell, hear, taste all these wonderful things. God is good and God forgives us too. So let's sing this now. Goodness of God. Ah. She never fails me Oh my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend in the goodness of God i
great okay. song. Thank you for singing with us, everyone. Well, welcome back to Second Generation, where we are on a mission to escape the ordinary and into an extraordinary life with God. Well, I'm excited to be back for week five of our Lockdown Faith series. So who's excited to be back? Let me know by hitting your like and love response buttons down below. It's always so much fun to see you guys respond along with us by using those response buttons. Remember, our hope is not to escape from our lockdown, but to escape from the ordinary. God has an extraordinary life planned for each one of us, but there are times when we are stuck in our own little ordinary worlds. So once again this week, we're going to learn how to break out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary life that God has planned for us. Okay, so, so far, we have learned three different ways to escape the ordinary. Okay, so let's see, what are they? Can you say them with me if you can remember them? We escape the ordinary when, one, God has a plan for me. We can escape the ordinary when God can help me forgive and show mercy. And last, we can escape the ordinary when God is in control not me. Great job, guys. So I wonder what we're going to learn about today. I'll tell you what, though, I know one thing for sure. I know that God loves and forgives me. Well, I can try to be loving, but I don't always succeed. But God always succeeds. He always loves us. But you know what else? Forgiveness is even harder. When someone does me wrong, well, I usually want to get back at them and, and, and hold a grudge. But not God. He forgives us when we ask him to. Now that is extraordinary. We can move from our ordinary life into an extraordinary life when we start to love and forgive like God loves and forgives. So let's say that all together. God loves and forgives me. <laughs> that was a great job. Now, let's get started on escaping the ordinary and becoming extraordinary. So how do we escape an ordinary life and go to the extraordinary life? We escape the ordinary life when we understand how much God loves us. Well, things get even less ordinary when we ask for God's forgiveness and experience it for ourselves. We truly move into the extraordinary when we start to show that love and forgiveness to other people. Now, there's a guy in the Bible, his name was King Saul. And King Saul was very angry with the guy that you know very well from the Bible, and that was David. You remember, David was the one who had a, that had a heart for God, and, well, David is the one who killed the giant with the stones. Well, King Saul was very angry with David, and the people liked David a lot more than they liked King Saul, and this made Saul very angry. Saul's anger was so great that he decided to kill David. Now, David and his men, they were always on the run, and Saul and his army were always chasing after them. Now, despite this, David knew that God loved him. And as we're about to see, David showed the same love to Saul that God shows to us. Instead of holding a grudge or, or trying to get even, David extended mercy to King Saul. So let's see exactly what happened in this lockdown, so to speak, of David. Okay, so when you guys came through the drive through blessing event and you got your David blessing bag, you received a bag of Play-Doh. 
Okay, so I want you to take your Play-Doh out of your bag. And I want you to pinch off a pretty good size ball of Play-Doh. And as I'm reading the next part of the story to you, I want you to start rolling this ball of clay into a nice good circle, okay? So in the years before, before David became the king of Israel, he spent a lot of time running for his life. And he was being chased by King Saul. You see, King Saul wanted to kill David. Let me see your faces so far or your balls, okay? They're nice and smooth. Now then I want you to take that ball and I want you to make it into an angry face while I'm reading the next part of the story, okay? Saul wanted to kill David because he was so jealous of David and angry with him. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> look at Brenly's angry face there. The people in Saul's kingdom seemed to love David better than they did Saul. Oh my goodness, there is another angry face, a purple angry face. Oh my goodness, Justine, you're scaring me with that one. Okay. So the people in Saul's kingdom seemed to love David better than Saul. And Saul's son, Jonathan, was David's best friend. There was a blue angry face from Mr. Colton. Now then, Saul's son, Jonathan, was David's best friend. And then Saul's daughter? was married to David. And besides that, Saul knew that God had planned for David to be the king one day. All right, so now then what I want you to do is I want you to change your angry face and I want you to start molding it into a cave for David to hide in as I'm reading the next part of the story. Now, King Saul had just heard that David was hiding in, with some of his friends in the desert hills. So Saul chose 3,000 of his best fighting men to help him capture David. Now, he set out to look for David and his friends with his large army. There is Miss Justine's cave. So David and his friends could see Saul's army coming in the distance. So they hid in the very back of the cave. Looky there, Autumn. Can you see where David's men would be hiding in the very back of the cave of your Plato cave there? They were probably hoping that Saul and his men would pass right by them. But guess what happened? Uh, let me see. Um, they came right up to the cave. Saul came right up to the entrance of the cave. Well, David and his friends, they were probably staring at amazement. It, they, it was clearly that they could um, see Saul standing right there and that he was all alone. Where, where were Saul's friends? His fighting army that was with him. So David's friends whispered. It's Saul, God has put him here so we can get him. So what is something that might make a kid your age really, really angry? Let's keep going in our story to find out what happened to make King Saul so angry and jealous that he wanted to kill somebody. Okay, now back to your Play-Doh, you've got that cave. Now then, I want you to change that Play-Doh into the shape of a cape, a cape like a king might wear. Now, David had a chance to kill Saul if he wanted to. He could even take Saul as a prisoner. But David decided to keep control of his feelings about the mean way that Saul was treating him. So, quiet as a shadow, David unsheathed his knife and he slipped to the front of the cave. Now, Saul's outer robe was lying behind him at the floor of the cave. So quietly and quickly, David held his breath and he sliced off the corner of Saul's robe. Now I want you to tear off the corner of the robe that you just made. Saul picked up his robe. He left the cave and he began walking down the hillside, never knowing if anyone had ever really been near him. And suddenly Saul heard a very clear voice from behind him. My Lord, the King. Well, David shouted and Saul whirled around and standing in the opening of the cave was David. And David said, 
Why do you listen to people who tell you I want to hurt you? Do you realize what just happened? While you were in the cave, my men and I were right there. They wanted me to kill you, but I said, I can't hurt Saul. He is God's chosen king. Do you see what I have in my hand? It's the corner of your robe. I was that close to you with my knife in my hand, but I only cut the corner from your robe. I will not hurt you no matter what you do to me. All right, so now that I want you to take your robe and I want you to roll it all up and I want you to start making a sad face out of your Play-Doh. You see, Saul felt very sad and ashamed, and he said, David, you, you treated me well. I've treated you badly. May God reward you for the way you treated me. So Saul went on his way then, and David, his friends, went back into their safe place in the mountains. Even when Saul kept trying to hurt him, David was wise. David knew it was up to God to decide when Saul would stop being the king. Now later, when David did become king, he was glad God had helped to treat Saul in a way that showed self-control. Let me see some of your sad faces there that you made out of your Play-Doh. <laughs> oh yeah, those look great. Awesome job, guys. You know, what do you think would have happened if King Saul had discovered David and his men hiding in the cave? Do you think he would have shown love and forgiveness to David? I doubt it. Saul was out to kill David. And if he had discovered David, then David's life would have been in danger. It would have been very ordinary to think that David should take advantage of the situation and take care of Saul when he had the chance. But David wasn't interested in the ordinary. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart, and that helped David to escape the ordinary and act in an extraordinary way. David showed mercy. Instead of killing him, he only cut off a piece of his robe. And in spite of everything, God still loved Saul. And David was not going to harm him. He did not hold a grudge, and he did not get revenge. When Saul saw the cut off edge of the robe, he realized that David had been kind and merciful to him. Saul felt, well, he felt ashamed. He realized how bad and ordinary he had treated David and how extraordinary David had treated him, just like the way God treats us. You see, God loves and forgives us. And that's an extraordinary truth. He loves each of us. Now, next week, we are going to talk about the ultimate sign of God's love and forgiveness when God sent his son, Jesus, to us. You know, we can experience God's love. We can ask and receive God's forgiveness and for everything bad thing that we've ever done. And that is extraordinary. But it gets even better. It gets more extraordinary. We can show God's love to other people. And when someone treats us badly, instead of holding a grudge or trying to get back at them, we can forgive them the way that God does. And that's extraordinary. The ordinary thing would be for us to do things our own way. But when we decide to love like God and to forgive like God, then we break out of the ordinary. And God gives us the strength to live the extraordinary life that comes from his love. Okay, okay, so today, let's remember one more time, God loves and forgives me. Can you say that with me? God loves and forgives me. Okay, so Miss Justine, I think that you've got a pretty fun game that you're going to share with us. Is that right? I do. Thank you so much, Mrs. Denise. That was a really great Bible lesson. Now, we're going to have some fun with a game that you can probably do at home because you're going to get one of the items. So in your blessing bag for this lesson, you received a Frisbee from us. Now you're going to use the Frisbee. The Frisbee is going to represent David, King David. All right. 
and you're gonna find five to six laundry baskets or large bins or baskets that you have at your house. Okay, the baskets are going to represent the cave or cave that David and his men were hiding in, okay? So you're going to place the baskets about five to 10 feet away from you, okay? You're gonna use the Frisbee and you're gonna try to toss the Frisbee into those baskets. Now make it challenging to your level. You can space them out and make them different points or if you wanna play with your siblings or your family, then go one at a time and each of you get three attempts to try to make it into your basket and whoever gets the most in their baskets wins the game. So how fun is that? But what's the point of that game? Well, I want you to think, can you ever think of anything more frightening than having to run away from someone who's trying to kill you and you're sneaking around and hiding in caves to get away from them? Well, maybe you can think of something more frightening, but just remember this. When David had a chance to get an upper hand against Saul, it's so amazing. He did not take it. He did an extraordinary thing by showing Saul kindness and mercy. Well, God's love and forgiveness are far from ordinary. And we can extend that love and forgiveness to others like David did and like God shows us every day and especially in David's life. All right, so have fun with that game throughout this week, okay? Mr. Randy, do you have yes. a fun object lesson for us? I heard. do have an object lesson. I'm gonna put on my object lesson hat right now. <laughs> you know, ordinary life can be hard at times, you know. There might be a kid at school who teases us, or a teacher who gives us a bad grade when we think it should, you know, be better or we deserve better, uh, or we get in trouble with our parents. It's almost like we, we're getting punched around, like, like this, like punched around. Did you notice that every time I punch this ball, this exercise ball, it comes right back up in my face. It, it's almost like it wants to punch me back. It, it, it even tries to get in my face, you know. It, it doesn't just stay down. <laughs> it would be very ordinary to try to get back at someone who treats you badly now, wouldn't it? But we don't want an ordinary life, do we? We want to break out of the ordinary into the extraordinary. David could have gotten back at Saul for trying to kill him, but he didn't. He spared Saul's life. He showed him kindness and mercy. God loves and forgives us. Now that's extraordinary. We can show that love and forgiveness to those who are cruel and mean to us. When we're wronged, instead of holding a grudge or trying to get back at them, we can forgive them and show them love like God does. And you know, I have to remind myself of this to remember God loves and forgives me. Okay, on to you, Mr. Rick. Oh, well, thanks. That's been a great lesson. I'm glad that ball didn't get hit you in the face too hard. Well, I think it's review time. We need to see just how well we can remember what we've been taught today. And I've got some special helpers to help me with these questions. So, Autumn, are you ready for our first question? Who was after King, or who was after David? King Saul. That's right, King Saul, very good. The next question is, when they saw Saul, what did David's men want David to do? David to kill King Saul. That's right, Colton. They wanted him to kill King Saul. But instead, what did David do? <laughs> yes, he cut off part of his robe and he spared his life, didn't he? Now, the questions are going to get just a little bit more difficult. How did Saul react when he learned what David had done? Mr. Rick, um... Verses 16 and 17 tell us that Saul said David is more righteous than Saul. So really it's saying that David obeyed God better than Saul did. And David was good to Saul while Saul was bad to David. 
well, that sounds familiar. Usually there's a good person, there's a bad person, but you know what? I hope each one of you is that good person. You don't want to be the bad person. Okay, one more question. This one's tough, so think about it for a minute. How can we love like God loves? That's a good question, Mr. Rick. You know, it comes down to who we let control our lives. I uh, last week we learned that God is in control and not us. And when we really let God be in control, we can love like he wants us to. Oh, great answer, Mr. Jeremy. You know how true that is. Now, I want you to notice that David also loved and forgave Saul. So I'm going to change it just a little bit and make it into our key point for today. God loves and forgives me. Can you say that with me? God loves and forgives me. Good. I'm glad you answered those questions, and thank you to all my helpers on that. Now, we're going to shift gears for just a second. Get your Play-Doh back out. And do you remember where David and his men were when King Saul came in? You may remember these earlier. It was a cave. That's right. So right now, I want you to make a mercy cave out of your Play-Doh. All right? So I hope you've got that. And you're making your cave. And my Play-Doh met with a bad fate. So I don't have it here to show you my cave. Oh, Mr. Randy, great job. And Miss Justine. Well, I want you to think about how long, how big that cave had to be for all of David and his men to be hiding in the back and Saul not to even know they were there when he came in. I mean, that's a big cave. Now that you've got your caves made, I want you to take, there was a piece of fabric in your blessing bag. And I want you to take a pair of scissors and cut a little piece off of that fabric. Now try to cut it yourself without any help because that's gonna remind you of the experience of cutting the fabric like David cut off the corner of Saul's robe. Now, before your clay gets really hard and you can't shape it anymore, you take that piece of fabric and you insert it into a part in that clay or just on the side of it because that is an important thing for you to remember. Every time you look at that cave and you see that piece of fabric, well, you can remember the kindness, the mercy that David showed to Saul. David didn't hold on to a grudge. He didn't seek revenge, but he extended God's love to Saul. And we can show God's love and forgiveness to others. So let's remember our key point that God loves and forgives me. Thanks for paying attention today. And I think Mr. Randy's probably going to lead us in a final song. I am. You know, uh, sometimes when I get down, I have to turn to God and he lifts me up. And then I get down, but he lifts me up. I get down, but he lifts me up. Let's sing that right now. I hope you remember it. Sing it big and loud. Raise the roof on your houses. Selfishly, our lives are wasted Humbleness left untasted You can't live your life to please yourself No, well that's so different from my mistake Exactly what it doesn't take To when you've got to come in last place To live your life, you've got to lose it all the losers get a crown To live your life, you've got to lose it All the losers get a crown I get down, and he lifts me up I get down, and he lifts me up I get down, and he lifts me up I get down I get down, and he lifts me up I get down, and he lifts me up I get down, and he lifts me up I get down Another day when I can't seem to get away from the many things that drag me down. Yeah, I'm sure you've had a day like me when nothing seems to set you free from the burdens you can't carry all alone. In your weakness, he is stronger. In your darkness, he shines through. When you're crying, he's your comfort. When you're all I get down and he lifts me up, I 
That was a great time today. Oh, and thank you, Eddie, for joining me on that last song. That was pretty fun dancing alongside you there. Okay, so week five of Lockdown Faith is in the can, as they say in the movie world. And what an amazing time we had. I had so much fun with you guys. And thanks, guys. Um, Brindley and Colton and Autumn and helping us with our clay decorations today as we were uh, illustrating our story. But I also want to know who else had fun tonight. Use your response buttons down below and let us know if you had a great time with your likes and your love buttons. I know that you guys are going to love that Frisbee David game that we gave you and that the crafts that you made with the cloth and the cave is going to turn out terrific too. So tell us, what was your favorite part of the lesson? And while you're telling us that, let's see, remind me, what was the big idea for today? It was something about God. Let's see, what was it? Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. God loves and forgives me. I hope that you believe that and that you experience that for yourself. And like David did, I hope that you will go out and you'll show God's love and forgiveness to other people. What a great way to break out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary. Well, it's time for us to break out of here right now. And I wonder what we're going to learn next time. Come back and we'll find out together. Mr. Rick, will you close us in prayer? Sure. Father, thank you for the great time we've had today as we've worshiped you, as we've sang songs, as we've heard an amazing Bible story, and as we've helped each one of us participate in that. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for keeping us safe and healthy. You just bring us all back together one of these days. In Jesus' name, amen. And with that, I think we say bye. Bye, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining.